when Laredo Taft was meeting with his art friends out on the river, mm -hmm. on what is now Taft campus, um, they came out in the summertime, I understand, mm -hmm. for a number of years from the late 1880s until sometime around the time when the last member of the art colony died in um, 1941 or 1942, so that's a long time. One of the members of the Eagle's Nest Art Colony, I don't know if you know, you probably know, that's the name of the, they named themselves, that's their group, mm -hmm. um, was an architect from the firm of Pond and Pond in Chicago. Very, very well-known, well-respected architects in Chicago around the turn of the century. And that architect designed this building he was friends with Taft. They all hung out there on the river, and they started out in tents. And this is an original Carnegie Library building, which means that Andrew Carnegie gave the town of Oregon $10,000 to build this library. So at the same time that the library was being built, the architect was designing this, and Taft asked him to design this floor to be an art gallery. Okay. So the art has been here as part of the building right from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. The family that just left asked me what my favorite piece is. This little one in the corner, mm -hmm. which is one of my favorites. It's right. right over the clock. It's very dark. So that's a distinctive piece. Obviously, the portrait of Governor Loudon, mm -hmm. which was painted by Ralph Clarkson who is one of the most well-known artists from um, the Eagle's Nest Art Colony. That was a commissioned portrait. And that's the one that, um, when the kids come over from the grade school, yeah, I always how. ask them if they want to see the yeah. ghost in the library. So we use that portrait. The most impressive and most famous one that we have in the collection in terms of paintings is this portrait here. And this is a portrait of Ralph Clarkson, okay. who is the artist who painted that portrait. <laughs> so, but this artist's name is Joaquin Soroya y Bastida. Um, he is particularly well known and well respected. Um, a couple of our um, pieces here have been on loan at the Art Institute in Chicago. And then in terms of sculpture, we have two pieces of sculpture that are on loan right now um, with the Lakeview Museum in Peoria, which is doing an exhibition and then later, starting in January, I think a traveling exhibit around the state of women artists in Illinois from 1840 to 1940. And they saw on our website that we had two sculptures by women artists in that time period and asked to borrow them. Um, back to the paintings, we've had one of our paintings stolen, and um, it took the FBI three years to find it and return it to the library, so that's a good story there. Um, I got to meet the FBI um, detective that found the painting because he came here after he retired and brought his wife. He wanted to show her the painting that he had helped recover, so that was pretty cool. This sculpture right here was the one that was the newest that had been added to the collection. And this is particularly um, interesting because um, Betty Croft and her friend Lynn Allen Young found it on eBay and bid on it and won the bid. And so we got this. They had the um, base built for it because we have picture of Laredo Taft studio in Chicago where he was working and you can see right here that statue before it was bronzed and he had been commissioned by a wealthy woman in Chicago to make this a life-size grave marker for her son who was in his 20s who died. It never got finished and no one knows what happened to it. So we have the last thing that he worked on before he died. Then, after we put an article in the newspaper about acquiring the piece, I got a telephone call from a man in Park Forest who said he had this in his garage and wanted to know if we would like to have it because his dad was a student of Laredo Taft's when this man was four years old. And when Taft left Chicago, 
he just gave a lot of his stuff. You know, I mean, it, this, this has the armature on it. And it's the working model for the bronze, which was the working model for the, the piece that never got finished. So we've got a real nice provenance here for the piece that we have in the collection. So those are some of the more interesting ones. They, they each have a story all their own. Well, the um, natural that. beauty uh, yeah. of the Rock River. The artists were drawn here. Taft was drawn here because it was a beautiful place to come to in the summertime. And they could camp outdoors and have a nice time with their artist friends and then do what's called plein air um, painting and do the landscapes outside. And talking about just this collection, that the mm -hmm. library does have more artwork in it, this room, the only thing that's in this room, is artwork that was done by the Eagle's Nest Art Colony. Out on the stairwell and the landing out there, we have artwork that was done by the artists from Grand Detour. Grand Detour. And George Noon, who lived across the street um, before he passed away, used to buy the winning um, uh, piece of art from the Grand Detour. Um, art um, fair every year and then he donated it to the library so a lot of what's hanging out there in the hallway came from him but we do have other work um, throughout the building that is displayed the difficulty is that we don't have any more wall space to hang anything on so we can't take anything else because we get offers sometimes from people who mm -hmm. want to give us nice art it would be nice to be able to focus on living modern artists in this um, community because there are a lot of them here. We don't have anywhere to put it right now. I think it is a big part of the community. I think that this art collection in Laredo Taft and the Eternal Indian or the Black Hawk statue is now ubiquitous in this community and in this area. I mean, the Black Hawk statue has been used for everything. It's kind of what it's the logo for this community. So starting with that as a springboard, it drew more artists to the area.